Well, there ain't no use in a sin and wandering why, babe. If you don't know by now. Hey there, YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today, I'm going to make another video uh, that has been a long time coming about the Italian champagne floor corker, okay? Uh, I made a video of that uh, oh, three or four years ago. And uh, I've gotten several, not a bunch, but a handful of, of uh, oh, smart aleck comments uh, that that is not a, an actual champagne corker. It's just, it's just a, the same as a wine corker and blah, 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 blah. And, um, you know, uh, let's, let's clear that up, okay? So we're going to take another look at this thing and, uh, and see what is different about this. Uh, versus a regular uh, floor corker for, for wine. All right, let's take a look. Okay, here is my Italian champagne floor corker. Uh, and uh, it's almost identical to the Italian wine floor corker. Uh, and it will cork wine uh, just fine, but it has one added benefit of being able to also cork champagne bottles, which are just slightly different. Okay, so let's take a look at the difference here. Okay, here is a bottle of wine, uh, my apple wine that I bottled, uh, made and bottled back in 2016. And as you can see, the cork is run home all the way into the bottle, and there's, it's, it's uh, a, little, a little below the flush uh, uh, location uh, or you know the flush mark uh, so that if I wanted to melt some wax and fill that opening with some wax for extended aging I could now this here is a Belgian beer bottle okay and I don't do a lot of Belgians this is my uh, iron belly old ale uh, but I love the presentation of a Belgian bottle uh, with the corked and caged it just doesn't get any fancier than that and it's almost identical to uh, a champagne bottle. I mean, in essence, it's the same. It's it's uh, closed the same way. So, here's the difference. As you see here, the cork is part way in, maybe about two thirds of the way in, and then it has the rest of the cork still sticking out of the bottle, and um, and then the cage is put down over it to hold to hold the cork in, so that when you re-ferment in the bottle after priming the beer, or the same with. Uh, with a bottle of champagne or, or sparkling wine, obviously you don't want the, uh, the pressure to just pop the cork straight out of the bottle so the cage holds the cork in. But if you notice, the cork is bulged out, right? It looks like a mushroom head. And the reason is when we put uh, the cork down into the iris, obviously the iris closes down and makes it small enough to go into the mouth of the bottle and then the plunger pushes it down into the bottle okay well uh, with a with a wine cork we would adjust this stop all the way up or nearly all the way up okay to where it would uh, run the cork home and you would either be flush or or have just a little gap uh, between the cork and the mouth of the bottle all right and this right here is uh, is critical because when you drop the cork in, you don't want it to just fall straight out. It needs, it needs to sit on something, rest on something to hold it there until the cork, uh, you know, until you can, you compress it and push it down into the bottle. But as you see, when we push the iris closed, now it's smaller. Uh, and the only thing that's holding it there is obviously the pressure on the, uh, on the sides of the cork uh, in the jaws of the iris. Okay. So it pushes it through that hole and that down into the mouth of the bottle let's take a look at the underside here okay so as you see on the underside we have this swing away latch right and we have a big opening right here okay now on the wine version of this corker we just have a small opening uh you know just about the size of the mouth of a bottle okay uh, and then this is just a, a steel plate on the bottom with just a small hole right here. 
but this champagne version has a larger opening, almost the size of the fully open iris, okay? Well, with that with that small opening of the, uh, the other version of the corker, when you drop a cork in, it sits, it's too large to fall through that smaller opening, right? But with this large opening, we need, we need something that will catch that cork and not allow it to fall through. And so we have this, this latch right here, okay? But what happens is when we compress the, the cork and we push it three quarters or two thirds of the way into the bottle, all right, then we, uh, you know, we still have some of it up here in the jaws of the iris. And when we open the jaws of the iris back up, when we raise that handle, the cork is gonna mushroom back out. Well, now it's larger than the opening of that, um, of that little uh, wine floor corker, okay? And so we, we have that larger opening. But now this has to swing away as we pull that mushroomed head of the cork out of there, okay? That's the only difference, but it's a significant difference because it allows us to pull this now mushroomed, expanded head of the cork down and out of the corker without tearing it up. Uh, and so, uh, you know, that's not necessary if all you're doing is corking the wine. Okay, so that's why we have, that's why they have the version that is just for wine. And then they have the deluxe version that'll do wine bottles and also champagne or Belgian beer bottles. So, we have right here a, uh, a bottle from a very, very famous brand of wine, Dom Perignon, if any of you recognize that. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's one of the most famous, uh, wines that I know of, at least one of the most well-known. So we're, we have a cork and we have a cage and we're going to, uh, demonstrate how this dude works. All right, let's get after it. Okay. So here we go. I have my bottle of Dom right here. I'm going to put it into place on the corker and the jaws, the mouth uh, is lined up with the jaws of the iris, okay? And so, I grab my cork, I'm just soaking it just so it'll be a little bit slick. And I have this raised, or I have this stop lowered uh, for corking Belgians or champagne. So let's just try it out. Okay. Now you see the head of the cork is still up in the jaws of the iris. And of course it's too large for that opening if it weren't for that swing away latch. So here we go. Pop that out. The cork is, is properly seated. All right. Uh, I might could uh, adjust it a little bit. But this is just a number nine cork and not an actual champagne cork or, or cork for a Belgian beer. Uh, I didn't have any of those on hand and, and I, uh, you know, I have plenty of these, so I didn't mind wasting one, but the, uh, the concept is the same. So then we have our cage and the cage would go down over and wire down over the lip of that thing and keep the pressure in the bottle, keep the cork from popping out. And there you have your bottle of Dom Perignon. All right. So, uh. I'm not going to waste the cage. I was willing to waste the cork, but there you go. Corking a bottle of champagne, just like corking a Belgian beer, which is not exactly the same as corking a regular bottle of wine. All right. So all said and done, I dare any of you to say boo about my deluxe champagne floor corker. All right. So take that, internet smarty pants. <laughs>
Tell 